So hello everyone, it is Toby again from Toby's Urban Sketch. Today we're drawing this scene up here. We've got this lovely canal filled with at the moment, and it's actually I think probably algae, but it's also covered in lilies and things elsewhere, with light and shade, and then these interesting buildings in the background, which have also got light and shade. So using just a pen, 0.2 millimeter fine liner, and a brush, a few little watercolors, how can we quickly get this feeling on the page, all this light, this shade, this um, interesting village feel of this scene. So I'm just going to go straight ahead with my pen. I'm going to start by just mapping out the edge here, which is going to be where our sort of bush comes and silhouettes in, doesn't it? And then it's got this shadow coming out. And let's just map in the other major uh, confining factor, I guess, this edge of the canal. And we're just paying a little bit of attention to the, um, what's it called, the perspective. So as it gets closer to us, it's getting bigger. These two lines are separating out more and more. And this just helping us frame our image really, really nice and loose lines, nothing clever. We can then use this to size up everything else. So we can see our little white house um, which you might recognize from different views from other videos I've done. Um, starts just above the canal and goes up to sort of the, the top of this bit of the tree and comes across. And this is where we'll just start doing some more loose, just character filled lines. And of course, feel free to be as tight, as loose as you like with these kind of lines. If you watch my videos, you know that I love just going for it and dealing with the consequences later. We can start popping in some of these windows. We can decide how much detail we want to make of them, how much we want to just have them as suggestions. And then we've got another door. And we've got this fan, and I am going to pop the fan in because why not? Um, and the van's just another set of shapes. Vans, cars and things can feel a bit scary, but just make sure you, there's always a slither of the top. So capture that slither, that little shape. And just pay attention to the, the shapes you are seeing, not what you think you're seeing, but the shapes you're seeing. Normally the windscreen and things will be bigger at the bottom. It's tempting to draw a square, but actually it, it expands in all directions. Popping in simple details like headlights can really make a difference. It just makes it obvious what what's going on. And then not being too fussed about it looking perfect is the other sort of key for me, at least, in getting cars, fans down really quickly and easily. And there we go. A reasonably effective van just popped on the page there. Now let's start building up the rest of this scene. So now we can bring this, uh, this line down and we can use comparative measurements to start popping in these sort of other aspects of our scene. There's some busyness going on back here, lots of sort of shapes and colors. I think this is actually a series of bins. There's a little bit of building work being done there. But we don't need to know exactly what's going on. All we need to do is grab some of these shapes that we see. And then by just getting the right shapes in, you can easily um, make it look right, even if you didn't know what you were sketching. So you can then build into this building. And then... Oh, there's a very funny chimney here, isn't there? You can see as we come forward, my line's getting a little bit more bold. That's partly because things are closer, partly because I'm getting a bit more confident about what's going on as well. And if something's closer, a bold line brings it forward in the scene. So a dual purpose or dual rationale from the bold lines. And then we got all these doors and loads of windows, a couple of them very big windows, two windows here and it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm not going to um, see where these windows, um, this window here, 
is coming out. It's like um, an alcove window. I'm not going to, in a little sketch, I'm not going to try and accurately capture that. It's, it's capturable, it's certainly capturable. It takes a bit of time and um, takes a bit of thinking as well. And it's not what I'm interested in doing today. Today I'm interested in this sort of light, this shadow, these invading areas of green which are kind of cropping our scene very nicely. And we've got this coming in here, some more of the green. We've got a background of more green here. So we've got lots of greens and things which are really framing our image. A couple more roofs and just geometric shapes coming into the background here. And again, don't worry about perfection, it's all about the idea. The idea of some busy lines in this background, which are what differentiates it from greenery, which shows that it's a busy little, busy little scene. Okay, so our basic sketch is, is very much building up. We can start adding in a little bit more shape in a few other places. So we've got all these shadows coming in. We can just shape those. And then we've got this, I um, always call it metalwork, it's kind of um, handrail coming forward as well. Again, there's, there's bike rails here. Um, I'm going to leave those out. I don't think they're necessary for the understanding of our image. But what could be fun, and I know it's probably out of, actually it's probably just in where I'm, where I'm sketching, but let's get this, the idea of this seat. We can do a seat just with some really loose drawing like that. It's very easy to just get the idea of a seat, especially if it's falling off the edge of a page like this. And just by building up some horizontal lines, some lines sort of perpendicular to that, we immediately form this idea of a seat and then we pop in some handlebars and just some feet. And you see how a little, little bench has emerged Okay, so we've got the framework. It's taken us about five or six minutes, but we've definitely got the framework coming along. And now we can start just solidifying a few aspects. So we can do things like get the pavement in, which starts to explain this image a little bit better rather than having houses sort of floating. We can start building up details in windows should we want to. So here I'm gonna just make them a bit bolder and there's some of these have been blocked in if you don't know it's uh, lots of windows in old buildings in um, in Britain are blocked in it's because there used to be a long long time ago there used to be a window tax so people with lots of windows to save money would uh, brick up some windows um, it's quite hard to get that concept across in a quick sketch so often I just turn those either ignore them or I turn those blocked in areas into into real windows if you like I'm going to, in this sketch, we, we talked a lot about the, the shadows and I'm going to use my pen to really start grabbing those shadows in this very simple hatching style. It's just using hatching going in one direction, different directions for each plane. So this side's going to have hatches this way, this side hatches this way. I've got a roof line, so I'm hatching it the other way again. This is all vertical again, so all this hatching can come down again. But just really loose hatching. Sometimes you have to build up your details underneath the hatching again, so these windows, just build them up a little bit again. There's a really effective way of really quickly getting nice ideas of shadows. And look, there's lots more busyness going on here. And you see how when we start to add those shadows to the, all this busyness, we can do it here as well. So we add these shadows just with some simple hatching. It separates out all those shapes and suddenly there's depth, depth going on as well. We can get some shadows under the relevant areas as well. I'm just going to solidify my doors down here. 
Do you see how this sketch is just building up? It's building up. We can do some similar shadows in certain places here, but it's also nice that we've got these these shapes in the foreground. And if we're careful, a little careful with our hatching, we can make these foreground shapes jump at us. We can choose in a moment or in a little while when we add colors, whether we want to make these pop with color or if we just leave them as popping out just naturally from their differential contrast. And then let's go to our van. So our van, we've, we've got some lovely shadows under it, which are a really important part of capturing vehicles. They always have this shadow which delineates them from the road. It's got some dark tones, but it's also got some definite shadows. So this side is in shadow, and then this side is in even deeper shadow. So we can double hatch even, can't we? Just to really make sure we've got that clear. And we can just reaffirm some of our lines, make it a little bit more graphic by pulling it forward. And these wheels are looking good, so we'll just solidify those as well. And there we go, so now the van is definitely there, it's definitely sort of popping in front. Let's come along here. This is off one of the first lines we drew and it's lagging behind the others now because of how much tone we've added elsewhere. And we can just add a, a few suggestions of texture as well, can't we? Because this is all sort of nice brickwork. Then we've got these shadows which we've helpfully marked out already. So a little bit of hatching similarly. We can add shadows in greenery and around greenery. Now let's move on to our next house and we're doing the same idea we can invent a couple of shadows just for continuity as well so these shadows which are very fleeting perhaps in the image we can just give them a little bit more structure and there we go and this side is Again, definitely in shadow. And then there's shadow all across here. Until we hit this greenery, which is a lovely bright touch. You can see here a little bit more clearly what I'm trying to achieve with these windows, which is give them almost that architectural feel. So some of my lines are extending past the window. Um, it just gives the idea of a, a sketch, a loose sketch, like where you've drawn your guidelines and then gone over them. And I really like that feel in my windows. And it also builds up an idea of something very much 3D, very real. And our doors, we can bring in that extra bit of tone with more hatching. There we go, so we're almost done with this drawing, aren't we? Now the last thing I noticed, and you may have noticed me pause and have a think before going to this building, um, and what I'd noticed was there's a lovely lamp post. I wasn't sure whether to add it in then or now. And I'm going to, instead of then, I'm adding it in now. So we just move it slightly to one side so that it can be clear of lots of that tone and things going on. And we just create some a simple, bold shaped line. And that's all we need to do. And then for continuity, it gets a shadow, which is brilliant. So it's all sort of joining up. I suppose the, the chair needs a shadow as well, doesn't it? And there we go. So that is pretty much, I think, our, our sketch done. It's been a 14 minute sketch, give or take. And it's time now just for some really loose colours just to, to make this pop. I'm going to start by treating the buildings very much as a negative space. I've got some different colours in my palette today, 
just experimenting with some of the things I haven't used for a while. So this colour is a cobalt turquoise, which is, as you can see, a very lovely, very bright, um, well, turquoise blue. I'm going to complement that with a little bit of a, my sort of standard cobalt blue, just to bring a little bit more richness. And then I've got a Windsor Green here, which is very vibrant. Um, that's going to be a mixing colour, so I'm not going to use that straight. But what I can do is I can mix a little bit of yellow ochre with it. And it starts to just mellow it out a bit. So browns tend to mellow your greens and create a lovely, more natural colour. Now these colours are loose, but I'm going to try and be relatively... Um, careful about painting around my houses. My houses have got this fairly detailed sketch going on so we can sort of celebrate that sketch a little bit by um, by uh, letting it pop out, letting it pop out from all this colour and tone we're adding. Now I've just added a little bit of a in Danfrone blue into the green and you can see that provides a different sort of tonality to it, a different feel. And above all this green, let's get some more of our turquoise going in. Happy to have the turquoise mingling in, the suggestion of light coming through the trees. Cobalt turquoise is also a granulating colour, um, so it will produce some really lovely shapes if we let it, if we give it the opportunity. I'm going to use this same darker green, this sort of bluey green, down here in this area that I was describing as shadowed um, earlier, before moving back to our mellow green, the, the yellow ochre, just to the side of it, and we'll let this mix, but we're creating these just tonal variations. Now we've got another very vivid green here, haven't we? So let's take our green again, this time we'll add some yellow. Now, I believe this is a Windsor Yellow. Um, exactly which Windsor Yellow, I'm not sure. Um, but that's what I believe it is. And we're going to use that supposed Windsor Yellow. Do you see how that creates quite a bright green? Uh, closer to a sort of green gold that you can get. Within that, we've got lots of shadows again, haven't we? So let's get a deep brown. This is a Van Dyke brown. And where we've got all of these hatched lines, we can just pop that in, let it move, let it do its thing. And we can extend this green up because we can see there's patches of lovely greens growing up the wall here. And we can start just, while well, things are still wet, we can start just neatening up. We can start letting things flow a bit. And all I'm doing is sort of patching around different intensities of pigment and letting the pigment create its own interesting shapes. And you can see a few places where I haven't been super neat, so I could just neaten that up. And then let's go, more of our brown. So let's start finding some of these more impressive shadows. While things are still nice and wet, we can really start pulling out where we think these, these shadows should be. We can mix that brown with a bit of blue to create variations in our shadows. So it's all Van Dyke brown and Indanfrin blue. I'm just going to add this. This little brush here is very nice, vivid green. So we're going to bring in another contrast in our greens going around. Okay, I think that's enough for this nice loose and airy sketch. I think we've done enough of this sort of playing with bright greens. We've got a scene sort of popping out of this now. And it's time to start just uh, incorporating a few more of our shadows. So we're going to go for that brown and blue mix, which is one of my favourite um, shadow colours. In Dantra and Blue, a bit of um, Van Dyke Brown, and let's just 
create some areas of shadow. So everywhere we've hatched, pretty much, we can add this, this wash to. And there's going to be places where it might mingle. So perhaps in this green, you can let it just join, join up with the with the greens and let the colours mingle, let the shadows and the deep greens mingle. Because in reality, that's kind of what happens. You get these reflections of colours within shadows. So just let them do that. In other places, control it and leave a gap. So up here in these roofs, I'll control it. I'll, let, I'll leave a gap so we've got definite separation. And it's about creating those different variations, in different places, varying your, your um, shadow colour as well. So going from a very brown to a very blue shadow, for example. And don't forget these lovely, lovely chimneys up here. And then just a few shadows in windows. And a few more just intense blocks of shadow in a few places, really pulling out differences in depth of shadow between, say, here and here. And the same in this car, the, the shadow underneath the car and the van is very much deeper than the shadow next to it. Okay, and I think we can definitely reinvigorate this shadow, which we did in a very loose way. But we can now come in and really intensify it. And we can apply a few little bits of texture in the road. Now the last thing I want to do is add some punches of colour. So let's look around for opportunities for colour. Um, and I want to pick out colours which are um, going to stand out. So a good example would be this red here. It's going to stand out because we haven't used lots of red tones. And we can use that red to say, oh, these doors, they might be blue, but now, now they're red. We've also got this wall, which is a nice red colour. Perhaps just some token splashes, and maybe give some of these bricks a little bit of redness as well, just suggesting there's something different going on. And of course, just in the chimneys, you know I love adding these sort of fanciful colours into chimneys and I don't mind at all that it's going to spread. If I was worried it was going to spread, I'd have waited for things to dry. And last perhaps, let's say we were talking about do we want to add some colour into the background here to make it really stand out? Well, that's our opportunity, isn't it? We can add these reds in just a couple of these shadows, let things just merge, mingle, become interesting. And then the other colour we can add is this blue that we've already got popping out in a few places. And suddenly this blue can be really punchy, punchy in a couple of places. Just in some windows, we could use it on clothes if we have people. We can let it mingle into some shadows, into some trees, create some colour flowers. Just about lifting that image, making it really have some points of interest. They're almost sort of semi-abstract points, aren't they? I'm just applying colour where I think the image can take the colour, rather than necessarily relying on the image itself, the reference, to provide me inspiration. The last thing I'm going to do is just reinvigorate a couple of lines, just a couple, which I think I've just got a little bit lost. And I really do mean, in this instance, just a couple. So I think even that is plenty for me. So here we go. This is the finished piece. Pretty much dry, maybe a little damp in a couple of places, but pretty much dry. You can see we've got these really interesting shadows, these fluid greens. Um, I really like this. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, you know, do you like leaving these big bold areas of open space or do you prefer more colour? What do you think of these odd shadows and sort of semi-abstract punches of colour? Let me know in the comments and of course if you if you do enjoy please do like and subscribe.